One day God was looking down on earth and he saw that the behavior that was going on. So he called one of his angels and sent the angel on earth. When he returned, he told God, yes, it's pretty bad down there. 95% of them are misbehaving and only 5% are not. God was not pleased. So he decided to send an email to 5% that were good because he wanted to encourage them, give them a little sense of hope, something to keep them, help them, and keep them going along the way. Did you receive the email? No. Just wondering because I didn't get it either. (laughs) My friends in Christ, I think what summarizes our readings today is found in our gospel acclamation. Stay awake and be ready. We never know what crisis will occur in all of our lives. Today, tomorrow, a week away, and the years to come. We need to be reminded to keep our faith strong. In all of our lives, it's easy to become very careless and so often go through the motions of our faith and about practicing our faith when things are going pretty well. Sometimes we we become very content and think, all right, all is going well. Sometimes we take misfortune or a tragedy to get us to turn back to God for help. Then we remember to pray, relying on our faith to help us through those dark days of our life. Today, my dear friends, our readings encourage us to remain steadfast in our faith no matter what. In the good days and as well in the bad days. The Book of Wisdom reminds the people of Israel of the faith of their ancestors who believed and trusted in God's loving care. Before the Exodus, they knew that God would deliver them from slavery, conquer their oppressors, and bring them to the freedom of the Promised Land. We are told that they journeyed for 40 years before they came to the Promised Land. There was times in which they had their faith in God. There was times in which they didn't, and they sought out other gods. But the beautiful thing is that God always remained faithful to them because he promised them that he would bring them to the Promised Land. Throughout the long years of waiting for deliverance, There was times, yes, they lost hope, they were discouraged. They often grumbled with God and said, why have you brought us to this place? We would be a lot better off if we had stayed as slaves. When the time of their salvation came, they were ready. It's like for us in life, my dear friends, the trials and tribulations that come our way, the joys and the sorrows, whatever it may be. There's a spiritual preparation that's happening within our lives. And sometimes we don't see that. We get so caught up that we become blind. Yet the readings today encourage us to follow the example of those who were brought to the promised land. Stay awake. Keep alert, be faithful, and trust in God's unfailing love. Living our faith consistently with true devotion will help us to face the challenges of everyday life. The promised land is there before for each and every one of us. Our desire is to enter into heaven, to be with the Lord forever because he has prepared a place for each and every one of us. And when we stand before God, we will look back. And when the times that we thought God was not present to us, we will see that the hand of God was always at work within all of our lives. You know, the letter to the Hebrews gives us a concrete example of steadfast devotion. 
Today we hear about the faith of Abraham, whose faith was so strong that he left his home, moved to a foreign land, believed that he would be the father of many nations. When all the concrete evidence seems absolutely contrary to what should happen, the text says, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And that's life. As Abraham did, we must keep faith, trusting in God. We must not let our faith grow weak even when we see the results and the power of evil and sin within our society today. We see so much tragedy that's happening and we see that it continues and it becomes part of our daily lives. And there's a sense of that lukewarm faith, that sense of despair, discouragement, that sense of disheartment. Because Satan would love to throw us in to that sense of despair. It is easy to become discouraged, but our faith is challenged in severe and overwhelming ways. The things that happen within our lives Yet the opening words of the gospel, however, gives us courage. Jesus says, do not be afraid any longer. Our God is a loving Father who never forgets us. Our God will bring us to the kingdom in God's good time. So we must be ready. We must stay awake. So do not know when faith will be tested. We do not know what each day will bring. If we keep the lamps of faith burning and strong, we will better able to negotiate the hurdles and the trials of life that we find ourselves in. As we reflect in our Mass today in our readings, we see how important it is to cherish the gift of faith. Because at the end of the day, he is our rock, he is our stronghold, he is the one that gives meaning to life. It is easy to live a life in a world today, there's so much sadness and tragedy and downright misfortune. Everyone has to deal with devastating and painful losses. These negative experiences come unexpected, often when we are least able to sustain them. How do we cope? My friends, the only answer is faith. We need to hang on to the faith and keep believing in God's loving care for all of creation, for each and every one of us. We need to trust that there is meaning in our lives and that God is still in charge. We have to believe that something good is going to come from a tragic, sad situation in life that we encounter as individuals, as families, as a community. Now, all this sounds beautiful and it's great, but what if you cannot pray and you don't seem to have the faith and you don't even like praying? You know, I think of the words of St. Thomas, Thomas Burton. He said, true love and prayer are learned in the moment when prayer has become impossible and the heart has turned to stone. Don't permit discouragement, despair, or dismay to keep you from prayer. When you just don't feel like praying, tell yourself, I will do it anyway, and then proceed to do so. Writing on his blog, one man said, sometimes even I don't feel like praying. Sometimes as your pastor, sometimes I don't feel like praying. But it's normal. It's the human part of us. 
because we're very fickle. One day you may feel like you can take on the world, the next day you feel like you don't want to be in the world. When I don't feel like praying here, what do I do? I pray anyway. Sometimes we don't have to say words, just to be still and know that I am God and that we are in the presence of our Creator who loves us. We're in the presence of the Creator who experienced the trials of life on earth and had to bear the cross and was crucified to it. Just like a lot of the things of life, once you start doing something, the feeling will follow. First motion, then emotion. The main thing is to settle in your head that you absolutely need to pray. We all need conversation, and we must be in conversation with the Lord. It's not an option. Finally, let the whole life be a living prayer. One of the great saints of our church, St. Francis de Sales, advised, aspire to God with short but frequent outpourings of the heart. Admire his bounty. Invoke his aid. Give him your whole soul a, a thousand times a day. Amen.